Well, in this lecture, uh, I would like to, to start by criticizing the classical thesis of the brutalization of European society on the first great war as the political orange of the death drive. You know? uh, violence that would overturn the meaning of the work of civilization or even the possibility of civility. As if the dest destructive forms of social violence would be the real basis for elaborating the complex of problems under the notion of death drive. No? We know that social violence is not simply a mechanism of constraints of bodies, but also of production of psychic life. And we must remember this point when it comes to the analysis of the death drive. No? Well, <clears throat> this thesis that uh, well, the death drive is a kind of uh, a production of the brutalization of European society in the First Great War uh, seems historically sustainable, especially if we remember how the First Great War, uh, with its, uh, its traumas and its compulsion of repetitions, was one of the horizons for the writing of Beyond the Pleasure Principle in 1981. No? Thus, war with these drives of domination and cruelty, with its dynamics of aggressiveness, would be the horizon uh, for thinking at the same time the degradation of the logic of social conflicts uh, at a pre-political level, and the process of constitution of psychic life and its wounds. Uh, well, but nevertheless, I'd like to, to, to ask whether the insistence on the thesis of the brutalization of society as the political orange of the death drive would, would not lead us to reduce the death drive to the register of the instinct of destruction and therefore of a non-convertible violence, a negation without productivity, as if politics should be understood as the social device to prevent death drive no? in all its figures, either in the figure of a ultra subjective, subjective violence or what Etienne Balibar calls a violence worse than death. Well, for this reduction to the death drive to the figure of a non convertible destructiveness risks uh, making self preservation the insurmountable register of politics with its affects of security and fear. We may be obliged to understand political action from the respect of the limits imposed by the self-preservation require, uh, required uh, from the ego uh, or required for the other, which has rather precise, uh, very historical coordinators historical coordinators that will appear in turn as insurmountable, un, as a insurmountable anthropological coordinate. But we can always ask if it would not have a dimension of the death drive that would allow us to wake up from, the, from let's say, this anthropological uh, dream, no? anthropological sleep, that seems uh, at any moment to return as the limit of the political action. For it is possible that we must accept a more contradictory grammar of the, uh, pol the political orange of the death drive. A grammar that allow us to move from the destructiveness to the emergence of a force producing undeterminacy. For the time of the First Great War is also the time of revolutionary violence, of the radical de destitution of order as the first condition for the emergence of new forms of life. We may also wonder how this political force of the removal of the order, order will not be one of the political origins of the death drive, especially if we think uh, in the uh, 
on the posterity of the use of death drive. For we accept that the understanding of the political origins of the death drive is inseparable from its destiny. That is to say that this orange would only be readable at the end. Taking into account the path of the death drive in the text of other psychoanalysts uh, or even other readers, non-psychoanalysts, but attentive to the question of the drive in politics. There are tendencies within a concept that work from within and that emerge only from paths opened by its reception. This would not be different with the concept of the drive. Well, then let, let us say that the possibility of a politics based on the, the desire for destitution and a radical transformation of life, of forms of life, it's inseparable from the question of a possibility of destruction. There is some destruction that is a condition of politics in its non-managerial aspirations. Let us pu put this politics as uh, fundamental for the 20th century on the axis uh, of this, this politics, on the axis of the destruction of modern individuality as a horizon of regulation of social demands. But uh, what are the anthropological consequences of insisting, as Freud does, on the existence of a drive beyond the pleasure principle. For it must be remembered that a subjectivity that recognizes a fundamental dimension of its experience beyond the pleasure principle is necessarily equivalent to the figure of a subject whose motivations for actions are, at least in part, beyond utilitarian maximization of interest. Thus, what lose its anthropological foundations when we accept the hypothesis of the death drive is the very logic of maximization of pleasure and the removal of displeasure as, a fun as funda uh, a fundamental for the constitution of the rationality of actions in our capitalist societies and for the definition of systems of interest uh, proper to the liberal, individ individ liberal individual and its desire for self-preservation. Hence, the critical force of the Freudian hypothesis it, uh, it is exactly that it removes the anthropological foundation of the political unity uh, uh, of in our capitalist societies. Hence, the possibility of saying that capitalism does not know the death drive even if it knows the destruction. For it does, does not know those actions which do not enter within the calculation dynamics of satisfaction, which do not submit to the generalization of rationality of the homo economicus. It does not understand how subjects may think that death is better than the health that social discipline offers to us. But let us note that Freud does not allow us to think that beyond the calculation system linked to the pleasure principle, uh, it would only have unproductivity and simple destructions. This death is not an end, but a certain kind of movement. In this sense, let us remember how the Freudian death drive carries a major ambiguity within it. This ambiguity was identified by Jean Laplanche when he perceived an un inversion that occurs at the time of the passage from the distinction sexual drive, self-preservation drive, to the distinction the life drive, death drive. Yeah? Because in some aspects, the sexual drive is closer to the death drive than to the life drive. That is, the death drive is uh, not only transcribed in multiple forms of destruction. In fact, these transcriptions are always a mixture of drive and fantasy. 
especially when it appears as masochism and sadism. Nevertheless, there is a kind of naked presentation of the drive that shows itself in the connection between the death drive and the sexual one. For remember that the sexual drive is characterized by Freud as fragmentary, anarchic, undeterminated, polymorphic, a free process without telos, not subject to the reproduction of life. This anti-unitary character of the sexual is not constitutive of the life drive that is characterized by Freud as a unifying power, but is constitutive of the death drive. It is not without thinking about the horizon of Freudian sexuality that, for example, authors like Bataille were able to mobilize the dimension of the sexual against the alienating demands of reproduction specific to the labor society. Well, we can even say that it is with this structural dimension of the death drive in mind that readers of Freud, like Gilles Deleuze, can understand the death instinct as, and I quote, difference and repetition, the state of free difference when they are no longer subject to the form given them by a self, when they develop in a figure that excludes my own coherence as well as of any identity. There is always a on meur, it die, deeper than the I die. That is to say, the death drive can be re uh, revealed as the libidinal foundations of the rejection of what we might call an ecological reduction of experience, a reduction of the field of difference to what can be object of representation by a, a, a ego, object of the property of a, uh, produced by the demands of identity of the modern individual. It would not be possible to understand the Unbehagen in a civilization that defines the individual identity as a fundamental mode of, the, of existence without resorting, for the, by the, resorting to the hypothesis of the death drive. But not just because the work of civilization imposed the limit, limitation of aggression, cruelty, and destruction. The Unbehagen uh, in civilization is also linked to the impossibility of social inscription of a force that inhibits uh, our concrete process of creation, that resists to the disciplinary structure of power, finding its drive uh, based on a destructive force proper to death. No? But, but a death uh, uh, understood as the destruction of the attributes of a person. We should speak about death in this context because subjects can appeal uh, to what has not yet figured nor within the institutional forms of life nor within their field of possibility. Death does appear as an absence of figure, like a zugrunde gehen. Uh, which is a zugrund git. No? Uh, and this is, will not be the first time that we discover this figure of production that must affirm itself going through radical unproductivity. This could lead us to, the more, uh, to be more sensitive to a politics of transformation that is not organized as resistance to the death drive, but uh, is a circulation of the death drive. This would allow us to provide a libidinal foundation for the desire to play with the imperceptible, with the in, impersonal, uh, with, uh, as a condition for the emergence of a political subjectivity capable of mobilizing the force of what is still empty of determination. But if the emergence of this political subjectivity requires a hypothesis like the, the death drive. It is because it is not a matter of simply counterbalancing the political generalization of the principle of association between individuals, uh, 
and the uh, and a uh, intersubjective intersubjective we us that would realize uh, in the contractualist vision of social life uh, we uh, us that uh, who could that could guarantee a possible grammar for social struggles because it is true that and i quote here baliba the history if it's true that the history of emancipation is not so much the history of the claims uh, for ignored rights, but that of the real struggle for the enjoyment of rights, rights already declared, then we could not leave the space of statements already defined as possible. The we, the us, that would define the grammatical limits of possible declaration as well as the horizon of stability of the movement that is proper to politics, né, will be the actual us. A horizon based on the generalization of a mode of enunciation with its dynamics of relations and identity, which explain why, and I, I continue to quote Baliba, what we call the self can, in the best case, believed as absolutely singular, a basis of existence of its own, of its own, which cannot be resisted to any model, to any role chosen or imposed. He is no less built since before his birth by a system of real and symbolic social relations. Conversely, a collective identity that is to say, the constitution of a relation of belonging or, uh, to a us, uh, in the double meaning of the term, is never anything but the constitution of a link which stands out in reality between individual imaginaries. This could lead us to say that in, if politics want to be realized as a radical transformation, then it should take into account a dynamic of recognition that is realized neither as an assumption of a self nor as an unveiling of a trans-individual self, as an intersubjective foundations of practice and modes of judgments. This could explain to us why, in Freud, it is not a question of going from self-recognition in a ego, ego to self-recognition toward a uh, we or a uh, us, but to assume the consequence of us or recognition in a uh, it. In the end, we might ask ourselves if the political force of the death drive is not in this question. That is, what does it mean for the subjects that we, are, uh, we have become to recognize ourselves in a uh, it? to recognize ourselves in something that stays like an uh, impersonal pronoun. What could be the consequence of recognizing that the fundamental dimension of the subject appears only through the emergence of this undeterminate pro pronoun, which denies any personalization and personification, which lead us to a work without, uh, word without place, to a voice without anybody, to a presence without property. Uh, Balibara asserts that civility must, among other things, reduce the illusion of floating identifications, which could float freely between all roles. But the death drive would not require reflection on the political force of a generalized identification with the very form of identity anymore. For could we not say, among other things, that this indeterminate negation proper to the death drive would be the true growth for a new form of relationality. As we cannot ask ourselves, and we cannot ask ourselves if this new form of relationality would be the basis of a social life transformed from the emergence of a subjectivity that asserts itself beyond the anthropological sleep that colonizes our political horizon. This hypothesis can be found in Lacan, for whom the death drive 
was animated by, I quote, a creationist sublimation. Let us remember Lacan saying, I quote, what is the death drive? What is this form of law beyond any law, which can only be a last structure, a vanished point of all possible reality to realize? The affirmation, this affirmation is clear. The death drive appears as a law beyond all law, a last structure that opens space to a la line of, let's say, to, to a horizon uh, from all sociality organi organized uh, in actual reality. It will open a space to an action that destabilizes the determinations of structure and is described as realizing, a, as Lacan a say, a liberating truth that expresses the compelling character of desire. But what can mean that the death drive is a liberating truth? Did Lacan put a mortal enjoyment as uh, the horizon of the end of analysis, as several readers have criticized? In fact, I, I believe that Lacan wants to keep the idea of the drive as a return to death, but is the very concept of death, death is, that is transformed. Instead of death as a return to the inorganic or origin, the death conceived from the objective model of an inanimate, indifferent matter, Lacan seeks the possibility of satisfying the drive by a symbolic death or a second death. Freud spoke of a self-destruction of oneself as a satisfaction of the death drive. Let us say that for Lacan, the death uh, solved by the drive is really the self-destruction of the person. But on the condition of understanding by person the identity of the subject within a structured symbolic universe. This death is therefore the phenomenological operator that names this, the of suspension of the symbolic and phantasmatic regime of productions of identities. Therefore, it does not describe the fate of our physical presence, but a transformation on an ethical order. If such a phenomenological operator describe an operator of an ethical order, it is because it provides the basis for the, for the advent, uh, for, for, for the becoming of other forms of relationality. The, dis the discovery uh, in, in myself of something that manifests as self-destruction does not necessarily lead to a compulsive defense against anything that might call into question our identity. On the contrary, it can lead us to openness, to otherness beyond pro uh, systems of property and individual identities. Lacan must therefore rethink the problem of jouissance that this death drive uh, is able to produce, which leads him to say, if anything, uh, if, this, if the summit of the ethical command ends so strangely, so scandalous to the feeling of some, to be articulated to the, in the form of uh, you will should love your neighborhood as your own, it is because it is peculiar to the relationship of the human subject uh, with the law that he, he, he have in himself, in his relation to his own desire, it, it, and this is his own neighbor. I would then ask whether this new relationality with its non-identity and destitutive consequence should not be understood as the Freud truth political contribution to his concept of the death drive. We use death to create new forms of life, which even contemporary biology show us. Because in a life, one dies many times. But one of the major tricks of power and capitalism is to let ourselves die just at the end. Well, thank you so much.